towards as we strengthen and bolster and not just the military or naval posture but also with respect to building our own atmanirbharta with aircrafts and strengthening our airspace top defense sources have told the money control part of the news 18 network that bharat is exploring the possibility of a potential partnership with french aerospace and defense major safran to enhance its engine making capabilities for the indian air force fighter aircraft and to develop engines for its next generation tejas light combat aircraft or the lca mk2 fighter jets now the indian air force had ordered its first batch of tejas mk1 fighters back in 2009 2010 the initial order was for 40 aircraft 32 fighters and 8 trainers to be delivered by 2016 the iaf placed its second order for 83 tejas mk1 a jets 73 fighters and 10 trainers in february 2021 as part of a 48000 crore rupee deal between the ministry of defense and hal hindustan aeronautics limited deliveries for this batch of jets were to start mid 2024 but they have been delayed the fighter jets were to be built with the g with ge's f404 in 20 engines but delays in the delivery of these engines were one of the major reasons for the delay of on time delivery of the jets now the deal as per initial negotiations also report totally included 80% transfer of technology to bharat now the safran push is also being seen as part of a wider push for defense upgradation after operation sindhu the if the safran a safran option actually works out it will be for engines to power tejas mk2 with india requiring a large number of fighter jet engines in the future especially in the light of recent military tensions with pakistan officials are seeking alternatives to diversify sources and enhance the capabilities of its aircraft field fleet now the lca mk2 variant that is 17 and a half tons a 4 4.5 generation fighter is expected to replace the mirage 2000 jaguar and mig 29 fighter jets currently deployed by the indian air force the lca mk2 variant has got about is weighs about 17 and a half tons it's a four and a half generation fighter and it could replace the mirage 2000 could replace jaguar could replace mig 29 jets and different sources are uh, saying that we are uh, now advancing only yesterday here on the right stand we told you that the amca project has also been green lighted so that means not just building the low lcas but also the advanced medium combat aircraft uh, are, are are also now going to be worked on that is the stealth so four and a half generation fifth generation stealths all being worked lieutenant general dp pandey with us here in the studio tilak devashar ji is also joining us we should have ambassador deepak gora also joining us here in the studio we'll talk about turkey we'll talk about the balochistan but first gentlemen as i say namaste and jai hind to you uh, let's talk about the atmanirbharta in defense tejas mk fighters the ins tamal all of this how critical is it for us and do we need to actually work a little faster to play catch up with some of the nations that are ahead of us general pandey yeah so firstly uh, this atmanirbharta issue while has uh, been introduced by this present government about uh, 10 years back about a decade hmm. back uh, somewhere the space picked up only in the second uh, tenure when there was enough pressure and various reforms were introduced the fact is that uh, right now uh, even the conversation which is taking place is about uh, about a western adversary hmm. for me personally i don't think western adversary matters because we are quite well ahead in hmm. terms of economy in terms of our technological advancement in terms of equipment uh, pretty ahead of uh, the western uh, neighbor our concern is always the northern one right so any investment which is taking place should be kept in mind hmm. how we are going to counter our northern neighbor in terms of ranges in terms of payloads in terms of uh, the generations we have, which we have to apply not only in the aircrafts hmm. but in all other forms of war fighting machineries hmm. right that is very important because he is at least a decade decade and a half ahead of us now while he was able to use reverse engineering facet by carrying out uh, by carrying out all kind of international infringements to get ahead in technological advancements uh, in our case we have been very concerned about very ethical yeah. in our uh, system and also somewhere in our uh, in our requirement of meeting immediate hmm. uh, necessities hmm. our long term in investment to develop our 
uh, internal hmm. what you call uh, ecosystem to build up technological base was missing hmm. this is now happening the other roadblock has been uh, this uh, uh, inbuilt hatred yeah. dislike for private players to be involved because the moment you talk of big ticket items right it is only the people who have got the capacities to actually invest into big ticket items will be there when you go to the government systems which are generally lethargic they are uh, slow to deliver their office and bureaucratic bound a private player does it much more faster so look yeah. at kalyani on one hand they developed the entire system of the gun system which was being bought by everybody else including the americans but could not be introduced into our system because of variety of lethargic system lethargic system yeah. correct so i feel that somewhere time has now come to start investing allowing the private players to take lead and this uh, this uh, move of the government of india to allow the sport to take place which is again a big no no yeah right we are not exporters we don't want to sell arms and all those things when you want to punch even along <laughs> with your weight i am not saying above your weight you need to cast aside certain ethical norms when you're trying to grow up in terms of a nation or True. a country True. Yeah, there can yeah. be an ethical ethical sale but nations that want to defend themselves can't afford it they are looking at bharat not just as a cost effective not just as a kifayati but also a tikau and bharosemand option that that's what we have been able to show via operation sindur ambassador deepak ora namaste thank you thank you for joining us tilak devashar ji thank you for asking yeah. may i shake hands with the gentleman yeah, yes yes please please this is this is your studio as much as ours and the viewers thank you, know very thank clearly you. that we've got always a to pleasure hide. to be with you but uh, tilak ji let me ask you this this jet engine issue rocket propulsion jet engines these have been uh, an issue for us for a long time our in our aircrafts our own rockets a lot of things we've got all our technology in place but building our own jet engines and these jet engines will help us even building our own frigates our ships submarines and then the engineering of these jet engines or perhaps uh, smaller versions will power our drones so this is something which uh, are, are we picking up the pace in this what's your understanding because there are others who are by you know they are doling it out to the enemy for their own reasons strategic reasons a vassal state does not need to make its own it can also beg borrow steel but we are building our own tilak ji quick word on this then we'll move you on know, I, i i won't look at specifically at the jet engine alone as because it's too narrow a field hmm. i think the point that jagdeep uh, pandey made is very relevant that you have to look at two particular challenges that you face Mm. long term challenge with the china and the immediate challenge of pakistan Now, i will not agree with him that pakistan is not an issue you know we make the mistake of taking our eyes off pakistan and it has a nasty habit of surprising you so while keep an eye keep a one eye keep a sideways look at pakistan don't ever ignore pakistan mm. but we have to tackle both so rather than focusing only on the jet engine I would say we have a long-term problem. We have to play catch up hmm. with Pakistan. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, with China, sorry. Yeah. And we also have to keep track. Now, if Pakistan is getting fifth-generation aircraft from China, so I believe now there is a bit of a slip between the cup and lip. They're not getting them in August. But if they do, then you can't sit back hmm. and not do anything about it. So you both have to an immediate problem. You have a long-term problem. But I think Atman Nirbhar is certainly the way to go forward. which has been demonstrated in this engagement with pakistan yeah the indian equipment did so well and for this i'm glad we have got rid of two narratives that we had for 40 years one was socialist <laughs> and the other was moralistic hmm. that you know weapons are bad we you know you know get the private sector in let them make their profit but they what they will deliver i think will be really something which is worthwhile which will make india truly capable of fighting on its own mm. without having to depend on other countries to give you mm. and also this socialistic thing that money is bad you know this we've junked yeah i think money is good money there's no question of money being bad so you know these two things have been got rid of you focus on art and labor you focus you have to focus on both because you're living in a very dangerous neighborhood true so i i so i know i haven't side stepped a question about the engine mm. but i think let's look at the larger issue right i think i think uh, ambassador saab 
larger issue is intent yeah. it's not about money it's not about what we want to do the intent weapons are bad for the enemy good for our defense that's one attitude the other thing is we must make more money because otherwise we can't spend public private partnership the industry has to come to the fore one of the priorities has been to get this engine right if you've got to go to another nation then they will always know what we are using oh you your, know, your thoughts there sir thank you very much sir always a pleasure to be with you and then when i'm with the general i feel totally relaxed because <laughs> he knows everything so it's so good to be with him yes, um there was something that you know you, you were hitting the civil service well let me tell you we're neither civil nor a service and a good bureaucrat is a fellow who can invent a, a problem for every solution hmm. so you give me the solution i'll give you the problem. problem but that mindset is changing now now we are becoming more and more with the present government sir let me say that i've seen this in the last 11 years we are becoming more responsive and this whole thing about the private sector chora badmash hai gunda hai daku hai paise banayega that is also disappearing Narendra Modi sahab when he talks of private public partnership he means what he says he says what he means it's a partnership it's a synergy between the two i can do certain things you can do certain things now the government is always lethargic not true the army of india belongs to the government to the people and it's one of the best in the world the civil service belongs to the people the foreign service at least belongs to the people it's not <laughs> private it we can deliver sir look at our our banks you know i i really say this from the bottom of my heart our state owned institution the banking sector brilliant i mm. mean much better than all these firangis who come and operate here so as you rightly said it's a question of intent and mr daveshwar is there who is a legend as far as atankistan is concerned yes we took our eyes we were obsessed initially with kashmir mr daveshwar i have with me a book that i'm sure that you've uh, read it's by a character called anatoly levan he's a terrorism expert he teaches somewhere in england lived in pakistan it's a romantic vision of pakistan but it's called pakistan a hard country and one of the things i was i've read it five times he says something very interesting pakistan's two big problems sir this is very interesting Gee. he says one is overpopulation the country cannot support the the rate at which they are growing therefore if you can't reduce your birth rate you hmm. kill more people you send more people to die hmm. you have a ready made this is his version not mine ready made army of jihadis go to the slums of karachi and pick them up and second he says is water that's why this mad mulla munir talks of kashmir is our jugular vein so your jugular vein is in my hand tiger if i squeeze your jugular vein the blood flow to your brain will stop as it is you have no brain hmm. so therefore the thing is that kashmir will have to keep talking about it this is their logic and then for population control get the jihadi so while china is our enemy number 1 make no i have no doubt about it at the same time pakistan has this ability to keep troubling us to keep needling us deal with him we are doing it so you're seeing what's happening in afghanistan the afghans hate the pakis you're seeing what's happening in iran they used to lob missiles at each other now suddenly this guy goes right. off to iran and oh darling darling islamic islamic tomorrow they lob missiles at each other again you'll see this happening time in. and now about one more thing sir mr davishar i don't know if you agree about balochistan you know sir i'm i'm 74 i've been in the world long enough ambassador to six countries i've seen this time and again sir ultimately for any country there is no such thing as loyalty in international relations you need loyalty go buy a dog what will happen is if the baloch declared independence and i'm saying this after considerable reflection the chinese which have who have interest in balochistan <coughs> in mining copper gold gas etc people talk about trillion dollars that's all rubbish it can be 2 trillion 5 trillion doesn't nobody knows if the chinese if the baloch separate and gwadar is in balochistan the chinese will dump pakistan and go to the baloch and we'll say my talk, darling my sweetheart and you'll see what's going we we will talk balochistan in about 15 <laughs> minutes from now and no, we we'll, we'll, no, no, no we'll <laughs> talk at length on this very angle this very angle and we brought it up the the reason for getting you gentlemen back here on this midweek is to is is to ensure that we talk about turkey and we talk about balochistan and that was a promise made that's cool why tilak ji is also there we'll talk about turkey now cool turkey yeah <laughs> <Let> <laughs> me, no, not me, necessarily yeah, cool let me just yeah. talk about this technology thing again ji huh? so you know there was a, a system of globalization is great for the world yeah there was a concept actually to take uh, cheap labor cheap stuff and sell it back right uh, two things have happened the loss of markets a uh, loss of uh, labor mm -hmm. jobs in uh, the west right has realized that globalization was not so very good right it was okay yeah. for some time but they have gone to one extreme 
the second part what has happened is this uh, covid when it struck yeah. and this uh, two wars which have started they have realized that the supply chain management is going to be entirely different and the third thing the rise of china has talked and told everybody that globalization is not so good so when you are talking of this high end niche technology system which is required for engines to yeah. support a, a fifth sixth generation aircraft or even communication system and satellite systems the challenge is that number of components are being made at different corners of the world which is very very specialized stuff and requires a high end manufacturing systems to produce right. it is not only about software but it is also of the hardware very very pure hardware which is required to run these frames and also the engine sir right. i i i i know i'm not uh, qualified to say much one of the key aspects of building a fantastic engine is also metallurgy yeah. now if we can build uh, temples which had got shrines which have got uh, shivalingas and idols yeah. which are pure form the vishnu stamba stands 2500 years without corroding that means we have enough in our books in our bank in our knowledge bank to create and to go back and you know revive metallurgy i'm making this very humble uh, you know point because somebody raised this and said we are not such great metallurgists no we are it's just that perhaps we need to rediscover and infuse that confidence and nothing happens without money we are alone in the ring i'm quoting the book by general wedge and the title of the book but yes we are alone in the ring and that's why we've got to do it ourselves unless we can do it ourselves we can build this we are not going to be able to stand up and say that don't try and challenge my sovereignty somewhere that's a problem and that's why nations all around us think that they can take us for granted so this is a collective effort across the governments across the industry across everyone we've got to get this engine technology right if we can build our jet engines across the board if we can have drones that can fly you know fly at the speed of sound and then we have hypersonic on the other end and we can retrofit that into our boats into our uh, tanks into everything imagine the speed that we'll get that that's that's where it is that's the core of it the pushpa came from us so if we can build and it has been built in the past and it's not it's not a story it's itihasa so then there is knowledge and there is ability i'm just leaving it parking it there let's talk